everyone welcome back to my channel so we stream a lot of things on the internet these days there are a lot of streaming apps including netflix prime hotstar uh, now it has become a culture and it has completely replaced the old television that we used to have uh, so in this video i'm going to be talking about uh, in this video i'm going to talk about how does streaming actually work and how does these different platform are able to provide you videos in real time now streaming is in itself different from the download part which you do because streaming in base is basically real time video that you are seeing of various download in downloading you simply download the video file to your uh, laptop or phone or whatever device and then you watch it so in today's video we're just going to talk about the streaming part how does streaming work and how basically different apps which are the different streaming platforms use this so uh let, so what is video streaming it is basically real-time data transfer and this data is basically nothing but uh videos that we are transferring now suppose there is a big video uh the video has to be broken down into small chunks before it is transferred on any channel or by through any means now a complete big video suppose it is like uh, if you are watching a movie it cannot be like completely transferred in just one single call it has to be broken down into chunks and has to be then streamed over a network connection so this is the first thing now which protocol will you use for this data transfer now there are different types of protocol available http tcp and udp so we'll just discuss about which one of tcp or udp which you what you will consider now this also depends on the type of application you are creating now for example suppose you are doing a video call in that also you are kind of seeing the person's video who is sitting on the other side so that is also kind of video streaming thing which is happening so how is that happening so that in that you can afford to use a udp connection now how does this tcp and udp connection differ with each other is that tcp creates a kind of uh, a safe uh, not safe i would say uh, uh no i would just say that it prevents loss of data packets so tcp makes sure that whatever the data is being delivered it has been per, uh, delivered perfectly and it basically gets an acknowledgement and it works like that whereas udp does not care like even if some data packets are lost it is fine with that so there is no acknowledgement kind of mechanisms happening here so in 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 a video call it doesn't matter the uh, about uh, even if some data packets are lost in between so therefore uh, video streaming platforms like uh, zoom etc they can afford to use udp uh, in the video calls that are happening but in the uh, places where a high quality video delivery is required for example you want to watch a movie you don't want to watch movie in a bad print or a bad resolution so you want a high quality real time video streaming so in that case you cannot afford to use udp because that would cause a loss of packets so in that case you have to go with tcp now in tcp as i discussed there is a dedicated connection created between the server and the clients and uh, uh, whatever the package is delivered tcp gets an acknowledgement yes that this package has been delivered now let's uh, move on to the video streaming requirements like for this application that we are building what are the requirements now the requirements are that the speed matters we do not want our video to buffer now we will also talk about what buffering is but we do not want our video to buffer we want a good quality video and it should work at the normal speed it should not buffer that's our major requirement yeah so like i discussed uh, before also we need a reliable and uh, reliable connection so that there is no drop of the data packets uh, in all the platforms like netflix you want to watch a high quality video now in this we cannot use directly tcp because there are various caveats that we have to think of like what happens when your internet uh, speed becomes slow or what happens when the internet speed comes back on how does tcp manage the forwarding of uh, these packets at that time so you might have observed also whenever you are watching a movie and your speed drops a bit the uh, print becomes bad the resolution drops but the video still keeps on playing so how does that happen 
like tcp in itself is just for transporting packets from one place to another it does not handle any other thing so we need some protocols to facilitate this kind of uh, transfer so uh, for this we have two types of protocol one is http live streaming mpeg dash today we will be just talking about the http live streaming protocol and how it helps to transfer videos in real time now don't confuse http live streaming that it is just used for the live streaming of like cricket matches or something like that it is also used for uh, on demand delivery of videos like whenever you want to watch a movie or a web series on your netflix or prime now uh, what does this http live stream protocol do so it supports uh, it gives a lot of benefits so the first thing it does is that it supports the adaptive bitrate streaming now what is adaptive bitrate streaming now adaptive bitrate streaming is basically whenever you get a video okay now this video is converted into different type of uh, videos in different resolutions so for example there is a video it is first converted into 480p and there is a 720p version and there is a 1080p version and then there is a 4k version also available so so whenever a video is uploaded suppose a 4k video is uploaded so all the lower resolutions which are possible these types of videos are also video files are also created now bitrate in the name it always also states adaptive bitrate streaming so what is bitrate bitrate is the rate of video transfer so how does this video transfer happen so this basically happens is that this big file big video file it is broken down into smaller files now this these small files are basically transferred using http so that's why the name http live streaming therefore these small http files they are transferred to your device whatever it be mobile or desktop and these are then combined to make a complete video which you are able to then see so this uh, these files which are transferred to you these can be of different these these can transfer at different rate so that rate depends on the internet speed that you have so suppose uh, there is a uh, the you are playing a highest quality video so in that case suppose your internet speed drops the bit rate all will always also drop so to download a small version of the small chunk of the file which is coming it will take a longer amount of time and because it will take a longer amount of time you would have to wait for that so therefore uh, in that case we have smaller other versions like 480p which are of lower resolution so what the adaptive bit rate streaming does is that it switches to that lower version and transfers the packet of that lower version instead of transferring the bigger or the higher resolution packet versions so this is the one thing which it does the next is encoding now encoding is also important because we have different types of devices each supports a different kind of uh, video playback method so your video should be supported by different devices it should be recognized by different devices so that's also is uh, the part now uh, like i talked about that a big file big video file is segmented into small http files now these files are generally 6 seconds long earlier it used to be 10 second now they are 6 seconds long now oh, once this is done like so this is how the uh, http live streaming works so it would breaks down the file uh, creates different first 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 it creates different versions of the file then it breaks down the file it encodes the file and then finally it is has to be distributed now how does this distribution occur now here is where the cdn comes into place now wherever wherever people are asked to design a streaming system a cdn is always required now what is a cdn cdn is nothing but basically a content delivery network so think it like uh, suppose you are you have a big store in your market uh, there is just one big store and the complete city has to buy from that one store now consider a different scenario when this big store has some small open branches in different places and people living close to that store can buy from that so that is basically the concept of a cdn so cdn basically provides servers which are close to different locations and whenever someone requests for a file it brings that from the closest location to that it does not has to go back all the way to the main server so that's what a cdn does and help hence helps in a faster delivery so that's how the distribution occurs with the help of cdn 
now the files which are coming to your client device in the 66 second format now this these are coming now what does client has to do the client has to assemble these files so that you are basically able to view the video so what does client do? It assembles the files in order now how does it know of the order so that's where hls works also wherever it is chunking the video it also gives a basic uh, you know index of that particular chunk that this index comes after this a uh, basically number or whatever you say one two three four and whenever the these chunks arrive to the client it assembles on the basis of that chunks now hls if i ask you again what would it use tcp or udp obviously uh, it will it is using http because the name is http live streaming and it is http is built over tcp so that's why tcp is being used here uh, because of the obvious reason that i discussed now let's come to the final part which happens and we hate the most which is buffering now how does buffering happens so these chunks of file are coming to your device okay now these have to be played by some with the help of some client device now what would be this client device this device can be anything like it can be vlc media player quick time player or it can be uh, adobe flash player which is installed in your web browser so these media players what do they do they load like these files are coming so they keep a loaded file loaded amount of video that these files have come these chunks are arranged and they say that this amount of video has been loaded you can keep on watching at whatever point you are but you can uh, till this point the video has come and it has been downloaded to your client device now when your connection speed drops the files which are being transferred that also the rate decreases now as the rate decreases the media player is not able to uh, create the videos ahead of your time like if you are watching at 10 minutes uh, and the next next frames which are required for the video they have not come in yet so the media player is not able to build uh, the ahead of video so that's where the buffering happens uh, in the buffering basically you are waiting for that small chunks of the file uh, of the file which has been transferred from the server to come to you so that's how basically in brief how streaming works obviously i have missed a lot of points and there would be a lot of questions so i would like you to comment down your questions i would answer them all and let me know uh, about how you like this video and see you in the next one